Let's imagine New York City but with a massive airport 70 meters above midtown Manhattan. While this sounds like a ridiculous idea in the 1940s, this was an actual plan for a mega project. In today's video, we'll look at incredible mega project proposals that were never built. Some of these were just insane ideas that didn't seem practical, while others were affected by financial and political constraints. Which of the following projects would you like to see in reality? Let us know in the comments below. Number 6. The Dream Airport Above New York Everyone has an image in mind when they think of New York with its cultural landmarks and iconic skyline. Still, this image could have looked quite different today with an insane plan proposed in the 1940s that would have changed entirely to Midtown Manhattan in 1946. One of New York's most successful real estate developers, William Zeckendorf, proposed the idea for a rooftop airport in Midtown Manhattan. Along the shores of the Hudson River, dubbed New York City's Dream Airport, the megastructure would span the length of 144 Manhattan blocks with a 70-meter high deck roughly the size of Central Park. A series of 10-story buildings were to be constructed underneath the deck for waiting areas, ticket offices and small businesses. The airport wouldn't just accommodate air travel. The plans included piers for ships from the Hudson River and roads and railways beneath the platform, estimated to cost $3 billion at the time. It would have been the most significant airport project of all time. The primary motivation for this plan was to reduce travel time. In the 1940s, New York already had problems with traffic congestion, and with all of its major airports outside of Manhattan, reaching these transit points was often tricky. A midtown airport would have erased the need for travelers to drive to Newark LaGuardia or JFK if built the airport would have changed New York forever. Some of the skyscrapers seen lay in this area, for example, Hudson Yards, and wouldn't exist today but also the surrounding area would have been developed quite differently. While this idea looks crazy, there are obvious reasons why this plan didn't turn into reality. First, an airport in the middle of the world's busiest city would be a nightmare for the residents. This airport was designed to accommodate 68 flights an hour, so people would essentially deal with aircraft noise every minute of the day. In addition, the traffic in New York was a significant problem already, and with people flooding to Midtown for their flights, would add another congestion headache to the city's planners. But even if they got approval, it would present significant engineering challenges also acquiring the land for the project and clearing up the existing structures in a 144-block radius. And then rebuilding the whole area with an airport on top would probably make it the largest and most complicated mega-project in New York's history overall. It's obvious that building an airport 70 meters above New York with surrounding skyscrapers and residents wasn't going to happen so while there was excitement for this unparalleled airport the ambitious plans remained limited to the newspapers. Number 5. It is the most iconic hotel in the world. We stay in New York and look at another impressive plan from the early 1900s. At that time, the city was witnessing a skyscraper boom. In 1908, the Singer Building became the first skyscraper to cross the height of 150 meters, and it would be followed by giants like the Chrysler Building and the Empire State Building across the Atlantic Ocean. The renowned Spanish architect Antoni Gaudi showed a completely different architectural style with attention to detail and curved shapes. His iconic designs for buildings like Camila and Casa Patillo based on a celebration of nature and Catalan culture were unlike anything seen in New York. Impressed by Gaudi's genius, two businessmen went to Barcelona in 1908 to convince him to create a masterpiece in New York. Gaudi was interested and proposed a grand hotel that would soar 360 meters into the sky. The exterior of the building would shine using alabaster glass and tiles, while its interior would house restaurants, theaters, concert halls, and an exhibition theater at a height of more than 100 meters at the time. The plans for such a tall building were unprecedented and overwhelming. However, Gaudi was known for accomplishing the unthinkable in the end. 
his plans were never finalized part of the reason is that Gaudi had dedicated his life to Barcelona's most famous landmark. The Sagrada Familia in the following years, the hotel attraction was only at a very early stage, and going to New York would mean leaving behind the Sagrada Familia. A project that Gaudi would work on for a total of 43 years until the end of his life the project was ultimately abandoned but never forgotten. It was revived once again in 2003. When some Spanish architects submitted the design for the New World Trade Center design competition, Gaudi's original sketches remain alive to this day. It didn't seem like the project would ever be built. Still, if the hotel attraction number 5. It is the most iconic hotel in the world. We stay in New York and look at another impressive plan from the early 1900s. At that time, the city was witnessing a skyscraper boom. Number 4. The Mile High Illinois skyscraper in Chicago is widely considered the birthplace of the skyscraper and, according to one famous proposal, could have been the runaway leader in the quest to build the tallest tower in the world. In 1956 architect Frank Lloyd Wright presented his vision for Illinois, a mile-high skyscraper. The idea was insane because, at the time, the tallest building in the world was the Empire State Building which was less than one-fourth of what Illinois was proposed to be Lloyd Wright was against sprawling cities, and wanted to build something that would save space on the ground and take the town upward 8-meter tall replica of Illinois included 528 floors, atomic-powered elevators, and parking for 15,000 cars and 100 helicopters. It was a whole city in itself and Wright said that it could hold all government offices and eliminate the need for other skyscrapers popping up around Chicago Wright's proposal was impressive. However, it simply wasn't doable at the time in fact to this day the tallest building in the world is the Burj Khalifa which isn't even half the height proposed for the Illinois realization of Wright's design was never considered, which is why there are only a few sketches and models of it still around. Number 3, America's Tallest Failed Skyscraper We stay in Chicago and look at a much more realistic tower under construction almost 50 years after Wright's proposal. The Chicago Spire was to become the tallest building in the country and would have kept that record to this day. It was designed by another famous Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava who has created other impressive projects like the World Trade Center Transportation Hub and Sweden's Turning Torso. The spire was initially proposed in 2005 and was taken over by Shelburne Corporation of Shelburne Corporation for construction of the tower would have had a slender curved design that would rise 610 meters into the Chicago sky with great enthusiasm. The construction of this project began in 2007 because of the thin design the tower's foundations had to be very deep. Hence, excavation went 22 meters into the ground, however, just as the foundations were laid down, the progress came to a halt like many other projects. In the mid-2000s, the Great Recession played a crucial role in stopping the Chicago Spire the principal financier of the project, the Anglo-Irish Bank, was struggling for survival. So automatically, there was no investment to take the construction further, and this started a chain reaction of several lawsuits from different parties. After ongoing financial problems of the project developer, they were forced to suspend construction by that time. Only the foundation of the spire was completed in 2013 Shelburne Corporation underwent a bankruptcy reorganization plan. And this incredible project that was supposed to rise over Chicago only left a hole in the ground three years later related Midwest took over the site. And after proposing several new plans the Chicago City Council approved an updated design for 400. Lake Shore Drive in 2020. This project consists of two staircase-like towers with a height of 267 and 233 meters. According to the company, construction will begin this year so there is hope that the site will not remain a hole in the ground forever. Number 2. Hitler's plan to build the largest dome in the world. The fall of Nazi Germany finally put an end to Hitler and his terrible cruel acts. It also spelled the end for some of its insanely massive architectural projects one of which was the planned capital city of Germany. In its most important building the excellent Hall Berlin was supposed to become the capital of the new world named Germany. Hitler wanted to reorganize the town along a central 5 km long boulevard from the north to the south that would cross with an east-west axis in Berlin. 
At the north end of this new central axis was supposed to be the Great Hall. The sketches for this colossal domed structure were made by Hitler himself. He had visited the Pantheon in Rome during the 1920s and was planning on building something even more impressive and a lot bigger. The dome would rise to a height of 290 meters and was said to be 250 meters wide making. It is the most prominent building on the continent. The vast hall on the inside would potentially fit 150,000 people at once. It was so gigantic that the hall would have been 17 times the volume of St. Peter's Basilica by building insanely colossal architecture. Hitler wanted to perpetuate his empire. According to historian Wolfgang Benz, the Great Hall was intended to enforce the structures of the rule. According to him, this type of architecture was designed to subjugate, overwhelm, and seduce people. Barely anything of the plans for Germany was ever built except for a few shell structures. In the end, the Great Hall and other projects came crashing down with the defeat in 1945. They reflect the seductive delusions of grandeur and the inhuman ideologies pervasive in Nazi Germany. Number 1. The Sphere Vision of the Pyramids of Giza For our last megaproject goes further back to the 18th century in France. This project was said to be dedicated to one of the world's most influential scientists Sir Isaac Newton. In his honor French architect, Etienne Louis Boulle proposed this 150-meter high cenotaph that would even surpass the Great Pyramid of Giza. While the Great Pyramid was the burial place of Egyptian Emperor Khufu the cenotaph was planned to be a memorial for Sir Isaac Newton who rests in London's Westminster Abbey. As an homage to Newton's scientific contributions Malay wanted to build what was the world's first domed planetarium bull dotted the interior of his spherical structure with tiny holes reflecting the positions of the constellations. In the planets during the night a majestic spherical lamp would illuminate the system and act like the sun in a universe created by the arrangement of holes on the surface. However much like the other projects in this video, his proposal just wasn't doable at the time Bull himself would have been aware of that as he saw architecture not just as a science of building but more as a science of ideas and imagination so the cenotaph remained an incredible idea that didn't get built. If you enjoyed make sure you like this video and subscribe to Amazing World for mega projects that actually get built. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.